Hey everybody, Jimmy Smith. Uh, back after the holiday, and also last weekend, there were literally no fights on. But the, one of the weirdest things I've ever seen, where we didn't have a UFC, we didn't have a boxing match, nothing for me to really talk about Friday in terms of my breakdowns and picks and all that stuff. So anyway, back from the holiday. I uh, hope everybody had a good one. So we're coming up on Islam Makachev versus Dustin Poirier. Of course, you know, obviously, you know, big UFC, right? Um, UFC, what is it, 302 at this point. And I want to talk a little bit. Of course, I'm going to make all my picks and everything on Friday. But I want to do a little bit of a deeper dive into Dustin Poirier, Islam Makachev, and from the Poirier side, because that's getting all the press right now. And one thing that you learn working for the WWE is, is character is everything. Their match, matches are predetermined. We know they're predetermined. The secret's out at this point. And yet we get so involved in it. Why? They're very good at building characters. And the match itself is a continuation of a story that we've all made. Not only have they made on TV, but we've made in our minds about the characters themselves. Dustin Poirier, in that regard, is one of the most interesting characters the UFC has right now. And the reason I say that is we watch, I think, basically two kinds of athletes. Two kinds of experiences we're into when we watch an athlete perform. There's Michael Jordan, Kareem, my personal favorite uh, basketball player of all time, Tom Brady. Someone doing what we could never do for a wide variety of reasons. All right, I'm not built like Michael Jordan. I'm not built like Kareem. I don't have the experience of Tom Brady, blah, 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 blah. All these things that make us go, we could never do what this person does. Watching Michael Phelps swim and you go, God, I can't run that fast is incredible. Because you can't be that person. It's something exceptional. And it lets you kind of revel in someone else's gifts that you'll never have. The other side is the blue-collar athlete that you can identify with. I could be that guy if I had made certain decisions in my life a little bit differently and all this stuff and blah, 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 blah. You, as a viewer, empathize and identify with this person. Right? In basketball, you'd be like a John Stockton who wasn't that big, Right? but just consistently a hardworking, very good basketball player. And uh, Allen Iverson, right? We can all imagine being built like Allen Iverson. can't imagine having the talent, but it's not like his build is something we could never achieve or attain. Fighting has a lot of that blue-collar quality, partly because of the weight classes. So there's never like one frame where you go, ah, I'm just not built like that. I couldn't do that. You know, fighters have all different kinds of builds. But Dustin Poirier is one of those guys who doesn't have any real crazy gift. He doesn't have Vitor Belfort's speed. He doesn't have the unbelievable strength of Khabib. He doesn't have a lot of the things where you go, well, I just don't have that. I can never be him because I don't have this thing, right? He is exceptional in the fact that he's done what he has done, not being exceptional in any one area. And he's a hardworking, really good fighter with solid fundamentals. That's it. He shows up every day and works really hard and got really good. Um, I remember showing people when I was training guys in MMA, um, you know, Michael Bisping and going, that's how good you can be with hard work. He doesn't, he's not, doesn't do anything special. He doesn't have a special build, right? He's not exceptionally tall. He's not especially large. He's kind of a small 185 pounder. He just has endless cardio and really solid fundamentals. And he works really hard. That's it. So Poirier has that character thing going for him where it's easy to root for him. Now, why is he getting the opportunity he's getting? The UFC generally doesn't give guys like Poirier this opportunity. Why? It's not personal. It's business. He's probably going to retire, win or lose, after this fight. They probably would be able to talk him into one title defense. But you're not going to get a long run out of Dustin Poirier. So to put a guy in this position where he can become champion and pull a GSP and go, I'm out of here, it's been a great career, you never want to do that. Ever. You always want your champ to be the man who beat the man who beat the man, right? You, you want that lineal continuation. You don't want to say, ah, he's, he's as good as the guy who just left. Part of the reason that Dana White worked so hard to bring Khabib back, you know, he's like, oh, I wanted to see Khabib do this and that. And that. He also didn't want a break in the continuity of the title, where the best 155-pounder in the world isn't the guy with the belt. It's the guy who just retired. You never want that. So the problem with putting Poirier in this position is there's a good chance Poirier wins the title and goes... It's been great. Thank you. I'm out of here. Once again, I think they can talk him into one title defense, but let's say he wins that for argument's sake. He's not going to do more than one. He's, he's just at the end, and you know he's kind of earned that ability to walk away. So it's very interesting that he's in this position at all. Now, 
a lot of people talking about the experience difference, right? I think John Anik was talking about the experience level of um, Dustin Poirier. No, no, it was Michael Bisping who was talking about the experience level of Dustin Poirier. Man, he's fought. When you look at the, the resume, you know, his resume is a lot deeper than Islam's. Islam got the title opportunity off a win over Bobby Green. Now, it's not his fault, all right? Bobby Green was a late replacement, gave him Bobby Green. He smoked Bobby Green. What do you want? Takes on Charles Lovert, beats him. And his two title defenses have been a puffed-up 45er in Alexander Volkanovsky. Once again, it was supposed to be Charles Oliveira. It's not his fault. He beat the guy in front of him uh, in dominant fashion the second time. So the lack of resume is always – you should be held against fire. You should. When you compare two guys, you have to talk about, you know, who beat the better talent. But it wasn't Justin Poirier's fault that – I'm sorry, uh, Islam Makhachev's fault that the fights fell through and he had to fight the same guy twice. So, um, yeah, the resume is good, but also – Poirier wasn't always successful against that resume. Remember, this is his third opportunity at the lineal lightweight title. Never been lineal champion. Smashed by Khabib. Lost a competitive fight, but still finished by Charles Oliveira. This is his last shot. That being the case, this is his last opportunity. DC made some comments about it where you do believe Dustin Poirier is going to give everything he has because he's that kind of guy. He just He's that guy. He leaves everything in the octagon. I was told by an NFL player that your your worst year is your last year in the NFL when they know you're retiring because they know you don't want to take that extra hit. You're going to run out of bounds. You're going to be drinking margaritas on the beach in a week. Do you want to do it with a cast on your leg? They know that. You're going to make these little choices, whether you're conscious of it or not, about the future. A fighter or any athlete in a combat, in a, in a contact sport, not necessarily a combat sport, but, you know, football, same deal. It's, you know, it's, it's, it's a... It's a uh, you know, uh, it's contact sport only in the NHL. Do you want to take that last check or that last hit or that last this that could give you a concussion that could break your jaw, that could do all these horrible things to you that you have to deal with after fighting when you know this is it? Fighters have to believe, and contact sport athletes have to believe there's no future. There is no future. There's this fight, and that's it. It's a weird mentality to have. And, you know, obviously I was in it when I was fighting, but it's like this fight is the only thing in the world Whatever happens in this fight, I'll deal with it. I don't care, but I have to, to believe that this moment, that this 15-minute fight, whatever it is, is everything in the world. And the moment you start thinking beyond that, it's over. Um, there's a fighter named Brian Baker that fought in Bellator, and he fought a guy named Carl Amasu. And early on in the fight, like instantly, Amas Amasu went for this inside heel hook. And Brian Baker's wife was pregnant at the time. And he tapped real quick. Boom, just Taps out. And later on, he was talking to somebody. It wasn't me, but he was talking to somebody on our crew about, you know, the, the, the fight. And he goes, I had this vision in my head of my wife taking care of our newborn baby while I'm on crutches. And I tapped. Now, he's not wrong. Inside heel hook will destroy your leg and like that. I'm, I'm not saying he was wrong to tap. My point is, thinking about this will happen, it's over. It's over. You can't afford to think that way as a fighter. You know? And and um, that idea of, you know, once you have something else, and not that I'm saying that, that having kids is a fight killer. Some guys fight harder because they have a family to feed and all that stuff. Um, but this idea of you think about your own mortality or your own, you know, vulnerability, you're not going to fight as well. Yeah, I understand that criticism. That once Justin Poirier in his mind, even if this isn't the last fight, like I said, I think they, they talk him into one title defense should he win. But this idea that the, f the future is just over the horizon, you start thinking about that, and it takes you out of the immediacy of the fight. Good or bad, healthy or not, you have to believe this fight is the most important thing in the world. Also, Dustin Poirier isn't one of those guys. Michael Jordan won a title in his last year you know, in the NBA in 1998. I know he came back with the Washington Wizards, but in his prime, and he won a title, you know, last dance, he won a title in 98. Michael Jordan was here. The rest of the league was here. Right? It wasn't here. It was here. I mean, there were some really great players in the league in the late 90s. Unbelievable. But my point is, he was clearly above the field. Poirier, part of the reason, as I just said, people empathize with him so much and love him so much and, and all this stuff, is he's not a level above the field. Show me the last fight. Dustin Poirier just blew a dude out of the water. Connor, who I think is very, very faded, to be honest with you. But, you know, Michael Chandler, I think he's better than Michael Chandler. You know, took, took him to the third round and, and was able to come back and win. Um, he generally, one of the reasons you love Dustin is he's right there kind of in the trenches with every fight because he's not so much better than everybody else. 
you know, watching Khabib smoke Justin Gaethje, well, you know, Justin Gaethje and, and Dustin Poirier are one and one. He's not better than Justin Gaethje. He might beat him. It doesn't mean he's better. You know, Charles Oliveira was right there with him, ended up losing. But, you know, he's almost like always right there with whoever he's fighting. That's what makes it so exciting. But it also, he can't go, all right, I'm retiring, but on the way out, I'm going to take care of this guy. He isn't that much better than the field where he can decide to win and win. And, and that's, that's one of the things I say about great athletes, all-time greats. Once again, the Michael Jordans, the, 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 you know, um, the Tom Brady's, they almost decide to win. Like, okay, I'm through messing around. Let's do this. And they can do it. You know, when Patrick Mahomes has two minutes left and has the ball and 80 yards to go, you know he's going to do it. Poirier's not that level of athlete where he can just go, I'm going to put 40 on this team because I feel like it tonight. He isn't that guy. He's right there. He has to work hard for every point he scores. He has to work hard for every punch he lands. And so he's not so much better than Islam. I'm not saying he won't win, but this idea that, yeah, I'm retiring after this fight, but I'm going to go out on a victory. He can't, you know, he's not that kind of guy. He's got to work very, very hard. And whenever you work hard, you have those gut check moments of, do I really want to go into my retirement with, with a smash knee because I fought this guy so hard? So I, I understand the criticisms of him saying I'm going to retire and then having, or, you know, saying the retirement's on the horizon and then going in in the, the, the toughest fight of his professional career. It's not going to be easy. Now, I'll do my breakdown Friday, my picks and all that fun stuff. But Poirier himself as a character, as somebody in sport, is so interesting. Also, the win over Benoit Saint-Denis that got him here, he got housed in that first round. Remember that. I picked him to win. He did win. But I thought I thought he would have to come back and win, and he did. He got housed, and Benoit saint ran out of gas. So even the fight leading, it wasn't like the fight leading up. It was like, man, he looks better than he ever has his whole career. He didn't look good in that first round at all. I think it's over-reliance on the guillotine. I know it's funny. Um, it's not a good tactical choice. So one of the things about being more experienced, too, I mean, he's always got the experience advantage. If you still make what? decisions that aren't, the right one, you know, you're not making the highest fight IQ decisions going for a guillotine over and over and over and letting Benoit Saint-Denis get on top of you. What is all that experience for? Part of experience is you know how to make the right choices at the right time. And he just has a tendency sometimes to make the gut choice that is not the correct fight IQ choice. He still tends to get in wars when he shouldn't. He still tends to brawl when he shouldn't. He still tends to go for guillotines when he shouldn't. So we've seen previously his decision making can be a little questionable despite his experience advantage. But it is a great story. Uh, it is going to be a very interesting fight. Stay tuned. Friday, I'm going to have the breakdowns, picks, everything ready to go. Appreciate y'all. Hope you had a great holiday.